The last game at Ewood Park saw four goals, but Blackburn Rovers only walk away with a point. We'll talk about the 2-2 draw against Scunthorpe next. That's right, folks, back once again with another match review, this time picking apart the Blackburn Rovers against Scunthorpe United match. But before we get stuck into the thick of things, if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and get your bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. So it was third versus fourth before kickoff, and guess what? It's exactly the same. Rovers third, Scunthorpe United fourth, and to be honest with you, a little bit of a gap has started to open up once again with Shrewsbury after they had a positive result. Um, the only, I think, blessing from this weekend or this, this uh, last... 48 hours of football is that Wigan actually failed to win at home at Charlton. So their lead has been cut short. Um, but yeah, to be honest with you, I know it's a bit, a bit down the dumps. We should have really won that game. I think we were the, the better side and then over the 90 minutes. Just two defensive howlers from Blackburn Rovers um, cost us the two additional points. But I think before the kickoff, if you would say to me, between the Scunthorpe United game and the Rotherham game, if you, I'll give you four points. Would you take it or leave it? I would have taken it. So if we pick up a win against Rotherham on New Year's Day, then all is forgiven and then we'll be right back in the thick of things, I think so. Let's take a look at the game itself. Blackburn Rovers took the lead on the sixth minute. Danny Graham on the score sheet, but before uh, Van Veen for Scunthorpe equalised on the 12th minute. It was into the second half where Blackburn Rovers took an early lead once again on the 47th minute. That man again, he scores when he wants. Danny Graham on the 47th minute. But Townsend levelled it for Scunthorpe uh, shortly after. Okay, let's take a look at the statistics. Blackburn Room is 60% possession compared to 40 for Scott. That just shows how much uh, possession, well, that just shows how dominant Blackburn Rovers were uh, on, on the day. 18 shots for Rovers, 6 for Scunthorpe, 7 of those on target, 4 for Scunthorpe. 6 corners for Rovers, only 3 for Scunthorpe, 11 fouls compared to Scunny's 9. Let's take a look at the starting 11s. First and foremost, Blackburn Rovers. Raya was in gold, Nayimbi, Downing, Mulgrew, Williams. Bennett, Smallwood, Whittingham back in the lineup, Bradley Dack, Danny Graham got the nod once again, and Tonneson up front as well. Obviously, again, I say this all the time, that formation doesn't really reflect the true formation that was played. Um, it's just easier for me. Anyway, let's take a look at the, my ratings for the players. Ryo got a 6, Naimbi with a 7, Danny got a 6, Mulgrew 6, Williams 6, Bennett with a 7, Smallwood with a 7, Whittingham with a 6, Bradley Dack with an 8, Danny Graham with an 8, and Marcus Antonsen with a six. Not the greatest display by some players. Again, there were some real stinkers at the back. Uh, I think Bennett was at fault for one of the goals. Downing might be for the other one. Uh, I'm not too sure. I've only seen the goals once, so I can't really pick it apart too thoroughly. Uh, the, uh, the two real standouts, obviously, but Bradley Dack is the only bit of creative jazz that we've got at the moment. Uh, everything seems to be coming through him. Uh, the winner... If there was going to be a winner, it looked like it was going to come from him. He had two or three golden opportunities towards the back end of the match to wrap it up, but he failed to do so. Danny Graham again had to get taken off towards the end of the match. Uh, I can't recall who came on. Oh, obviously Dominic Samuel came on, but uh, to no avail. Uh, so when he went off, he was, you know, took it, taking off our major threat up front. Uh, Antonison not really offering much besides his effort and running. Uh, there was no real uh, chances that went his way. So pretty toothless up front despite uh, Danny Graham and Bradley Dack's efforts. So I'm hoping that's something that Tony Mowbray's taking a note of. And maybe just maybe he'll have a couple of ideas up his sleeve in the transfer window. Anyway, let's take a look at the start in 11-4. Scunthorpe, Gilks was in goal. Townsend, Wallace, Goody, Burgess, Morris, Ojo, Holmes, Adalkun. Van Veen and Hooper. To be honest with you, it's a good point. I know we picked up a we picked up a cheeky win at their place when we early on in the season. Um, I think we won one nil um, in a game. I think we didn't really dominate, so it was one of those lucky scrapey wins that we we picked up early doors. Uh, this one, however, you know, Scunthorpe coming into this this game in also a decent shape and decent form, um, and the way we play at Ewood these days is. It's it's tricky, you know. We're not we're not. If it, if we had our away form or our away mentality, maybe we would have uh, ended the day with three or four goals. But no, nope. on to the next one. Rotherham United on New Year's Day. So hopefully we can pick up three points there. Anyway, you know what I had to say, but what did the gaff have to say? Let's take a listen to what he said about the match and also about the upcoming transfer window. Uh, what a frustration! I think I thought we did enough to win the match. I thought. Um... 
Well, particularly second half, we were very dominant. Um, and just the nature of the goals we conceded was very unlike us. Um, obviously, particularly the second one, you know, the missed kick in the six yard box. But um, I thought against a pretty good football team, those results show that they're a good football team. I thought we did more than enough to win it. Um, we didn't give them some credit. Um, well, let's put the point in the bag and let's move on to the next game. Yeah, listen, I could, I, to be honest, I don't, I'm not sure they deserve to score a goal in the game. We, we barely give them a goal, I think, both goals. But um, was it a lack of concentration after Elliot Bennett's situation? I don't know. Um, referees a bit of a kerfuddle, I think, about what he was doing. But um, And then we, we, you know, we have to just look at ourselves. I think the loss of focus um, allowed them to get in too easy, to be honest, for the first goal. David Ray's got to do better, but... Um, there you go, it, was a, it cost us a goal in the second goal. They got into our box too easy. I think you know, I've, I've spoken to the players, I feel they needed to close it down better and then miss kicked in the box. But um, yeah, we were struggling to see them scoring a goal, to be honest. I don't think there was any stage of the game where they had us pinned back and they were, you felt, oh, it could be a goal coming. They sort of, there were goals in isolation for them and yet. I felt as if we dominated a lot of possession, a lot of play, got a lot of balls in their box. Had one or two really clear-cut chances to to finish the game off, particularly at two-one to go three-one up. We had fantastic chances, but um, it wasn't to be today. They got the equaliser, and as I said, let's put the point in the bag. Let's move on, Rotherham next game, and uh, see how we get on. Yeah, he's pretty he's pretty disappointed in the dressing room. He uh, he works so tirelessly for the team. Um, He's played, you know, he's, he's played a fantastic part in our success this year, or relative success this year, and he shouldn't be too disappointed. And yet, you are disappointed when you you were part of the reason why we lost a goal, that dropped some points. Um, but he's weighed in a lot more with some real fantastic effort, work rate, quality this year as well. So um, we put it behind us. Listen, it's frustrating any football match where you feel you've done enough to win and you don't get all the three points. Particularly on the back of, you know, Wigan dropped a few points last night as well. It was a, an opportunity for us to really start flexing our muscles, really, I think. And um, we didn't take that opportunity, but we did play against a good side today. We've gone, a, you know, quite a while without getting beat. Well, illness is, you know, so last game we had two or three missing through illness. This game we've had two or three different ones missing through illness. Uh, it's obviously going through the football club. Um, you're just hopeful that nothing, you know, after the effort they put in today, that you know they don't wake up tomorrow morning and a few are under the weather. Uh, we, you know, we need everybody if we can. I'm hoping Craig and Joe will declare themselves fit for for Monday. But let's wait and see. It's it's easier said than done. If you've sort of been washed out energy wise and can't get out of your bed, it's not easy to get your boots on and go and try and play 90 minutes of football. I think it's his ankle. I think he's rolled his ankle. I think he's. Um, He's got it all strapped up there, everybody's in tomorrow, we'll wait and see, we'll see how he's feeling tomorrow, see if he can put any weight on it. Um, that's an, it is what it is, it, I, I, never, I try not to mourn about injuries, if I can help it, it's part and parcel of football, it's why you need a squad of players. Um, you know, we've got other lads who, who, who will relish the opportunity if given the chance. Well, we could have got two more points in Northampton, but... Um, yeah, listen, the, the, you'd have to see it. I, I don't know. I didn't, did I see it was 13 or something like that, unbeaten in the league? It's um, We shouldn't fear the league. Rotherham, again, as somebody told me a stat that they were top goal scorers at home this year in the league, which is an obvious threat that we have to try and curtail. Um, but we should look forward to the challenge, going on the road, hopefully with a good following, um, try and make it a good day for the people who follow the club. and. Um, We'll be giving everything we can to get another three points. We, I think we've, I think we've lodged two bids with football clubs yesterday, spending money. Um, we'll be hopeful. Let's wait and see. I think, you know, I think the time to strengthen is when you're doing okay and strong. It's um, send a message to everybody else. But um, you know, not people don't really want to lose their better players in in January. Um, these offers are around people who will be out of contract in the summer and so the clubs have got decisions to make whether they want to keep their players and let them go for nothing in the summer or whether they want to take a little bit of money now. We'll wait and see. Well, that's what the gaff had to say. What did the fans have to say on social media? Let's take a look. First and foremost, Elliot Bennett was out there. Very good team performance today, which deserved all three points. Gutted for my mistake at the back post which cost us we'll work hard to put it right at the next opportunity ryan naimbi was also in there unlucky not to get the win today take the point and on to monday 
As for some of the fans, Tom Council said on uh, one of the Facebook pages, well, at least we didn't lose. So he's pretty much cutting it sh uh, short to the chase. Matthew Grimshaw on a similar vein, should have won today. Jaden McDonald, if Graham stayed on, we would have won that game and he would have scored a hat trick. Well, that's ifs and buts, my friend. Darren Carl Roberts said, love Rovers. Hate Venkies and the Dingles, unbeaten in 13 league games now. Now cheer the heck up, he said. Matthew Leach said, two points on average a game. Got the best two players in the league by far. About to improve the squad, not being funny, but we are in a great position going into 2018, given where we were at the end of May and the doom and gloom. Onwards and upwards, Rovers. Matt Pollitt said, poor defending, costing us again. Still unbeaten, though, on the positive side. Moving forward, Gavin Prescott said this again on one of the Facebook pages. There are some absolute ridiculous comments on this group, referencing the Facebook groups. Scumfall are a good team. They played us off the park at their grand. Some of the comments on here are laughable. And some of the young idiots who are in this group and sit in the Blackburn end, please do one. You are not wanted. The lads played well today, but for two unfortunate slips in defence, we would have won handsomely. We don't need your negativity and complete lack of understanding of what football is about. Get behind the boys and we'll be in the top two. Stop being complete uh, dumpsters and we'll know when we know who you are. Moving on, Tom Garster. I, I think, I'm not sure. I must be a Shrewsbury fan. Looks like Wigan and Blackburn are bottling it. Shrews on the up. Watch out, Wigan. Toby Skelton said this. Fantastic point for little old Scumfop away at Blackburn. Really battled well and deserved to come away with something. Rovers played some good stuff at times and when the crowd finally got behind them, they looked like a really good side but just couldn't finish some decent chances. We're not scared of any of the big boys. Rest of League One, you're welcome. Meanwhile, Transfer News Talk Blackburn on Twitter said two bids have been made. Both players are out of contract in the summer. It's actually a, a quote from Tony Mowbray. You've probably heard that already as in the Talking Heads section. Uh, meanwhile, one of the players is rumoured to be Amari Bell from Fleetwood. And he posted this little interesting tweet. Great win and a clean sheet. The feeling doesn't get much better. Buzzing for my guys. He references a couple of players in here. Bags men. And then Rovers tweet with a little cheeky little tweet. Hi, mate. Are you signing for Blackburn? Cheers. Obviously, there was no reply, but it was just interesting little uh, bit of banter there from the boys. Let's take a look around the grounds. Uh, obviously, 48 hours of football here. Uh, Wigan, first and foremost, they played yesterday and they picked up a draw at home against Charles. Count two points dropped for them. Doncaster also with a three points after a 2-0 one against Strugglers. Rochdale into today's games. The one that we were really interested in was the South End United versus Shrewsbury. And Shrewsbury did the business and kept up their end of the bargain uh, and they continued to win. Next up, opponents, Rotherham United also picked up an away win, beating Walsall at their place 2-1. Uh, bottom club, Berry continued to lose after they lost at home to Fleetwood Town. The story of the day was at MK Dons. I think they won with nine men against High Flyers, Peterborough. Portsmouth also squeezed into the top six with a 3-1 win at Northampton. Well, that's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. I want to give a big shout out to the guys at the BRFCS forum. If you haven't checked out the forum, make sure you do so. There's a link in my description below. It's a great opportunity for you to chat with fellow Rovers from around the globe. Also, I'm on Twitter and Facebook if you want to check me out on those social platforms. Details in the description once again. Yes, two points dropped a little bit, um, but they're a tough side of Scunthorpe. Hopefully, we can pick up three points against Rotherham to get us right back in the thick of things in our chase for the top two positions. Anyway, until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now.